Hi, welcome to Middleware Friday, episode 49, January 19th, 2018. Integrating with Azure Search. So in this episode, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, how you do integration with Azure Search. Maybe not too obvious or what you would think about straight away, but I did find it an interesting topic to uh, discuss to you today in this episode, because you might um, encounter uh, a solution that involves uh, an Azure solution, uh, in this case that might involve Azure Search, or maybe that there is a search capability that you have to expose through an API, or you somehow you, you have to work with this service, then this might be a good uh, primer for you. So Azure Search, so uh, it's a, a service in Azure, um, it's a platform as a service, so it has scaling, auto scaling, pay as you go model, um, availability, those kind of characteristics you can find in any type of, let's say, serverless capability in Azure. Um, and then there are also a few steps if you kind of work working with Azure Search. So you provision the service, um, which is obvious. Uh, you, you create an index, you index your data, and then you apply search to it. So the provisioning is kind of done either through the Azure portal or through the Azure Resource Management API. So you can call an API and then provision the service, create an index, query an index. You can do that type of stuff. Um, it's bound to a certain region. Um, the search uh, provides you know, keys, indexers, uh, data sources, and it also provides the, uh, the elastic, uh, elasticity you find with particularly uh, many of the Azure services. Uh, you can do uh, replicas, you can do partitioning of your documents uh, to enhance uh, uh, throughput of writing the documents. You know, you can change that capacity pretty dynamic. So once you've provisioned your um, service, your Azure uh, service, you can start creating an index. So an index you have to think about as a kind of a table which has like uh, columns, you know, like names and types and, and keys. And you can uh, apply uh, attribu uh, uh, attributes on top of those uh, fields. So you can, make, you can indicate, okay, you make, can make them searchable, facetable, sortable, um, filterable. You can do that type of stuff. And you can apply linguistics to it. You can apply a certain language or uh, assign a, a specify a dictionary to it. You can create order suggestions for order completes when you UI. You can do some uh, scoring profiles and ranking. So you can do pretty versatile stuff with um, the index. The algorithms behind the index are um, not tunable. So it's not like any other type of, of search engine. This is kind of a pre-built um, index for you. And you just leverage as, is, as it is a serverless component, a uh, platform as a service. So you only have to worry about provisioning, creating the index. Then the next step would be indexing the data. So this is two ways you can do it. You can either do uh, pull the data um, using indexes, so you can pull data from, let's say, a, uh, an Azure SQL DB or a document DB and change the detection when ch things are changing and then push them again um, or pull them from these, uh, from these uh, sources, actually. Um, or you do, can do the push mechanism, so you can use the API um, to create the index, um, upload data, ex uh, and ex etc. You know, a web job, for instance, would be a very good uh, fit for um, having the, this done regularly to update your index or upload uh, documents if necessary, um, do like um, updates or creating or uh, that type of stuff with your index. What I will show later on is the way how you can do the pull mechanism. So once that's done, you can do the search on top of your document, your collection basically. So you can sort, you can do paging, um, you can query from the server, from a browser, um, which I'll show you in the portal, uh, or you can you know, call them through clients. Um, you can create cores and that type of stuff. So a lot of things you can do around um, once that data is indexed and then you can start searching that data. And finally, you can also customize the search more. So this when you get more into the customability is basically where you can create scoring profiles, where you can apply certain weights on fields, you can do scoring, uh, you can do things around distances, that type of stuff um, with customizing your search. And basically there are three main patterns. Um, 
You can know your data directly from the available index. You can do personalization using a tag boosting. So that's capabilities there. And you can do some analytics on top of your search and compute and push that to the index to make it even more better. So this is around customization around your search. Now, how do you integrate uh, with search? Uh, let's say you want to apply search um, on top of a collection of documents which resides in document DB. So you kind of want to pull that data. So it's integrated with uh, Cosmos DB. So let's say you have a document DB. You can say, okay, add search. So it's right in there, as you can see. Next, you'll pick your service. So you pick basically what type of search capability you want in your search instance, in this case. So I already created a beer, a beer search, um, search instance. So you have to create the instance first before you can um, add search towards, let's say, your document DB collection. Then you connect to your data. So as you can see here, document DB, you provide a name, your connection string is there. You say, okay, which database is it? What type of collection? Note here the query with using a high uh, watermark. So this is kind of necessary later on when you want to pull data, uh, let's say every hour or weekly based on, on the changes. And that will be more um, apparent when I show you the index. So that's the last part. So going forward, so once you picked your data, it will do sampling of the data and then provide the basic index for you. So you see the fields, you see the types, you, the types are being derived from that sampling. Um, you see the attributes, um, which you can specify yourself, if it's retrievable, filterable, sortable, festable, or searchable. So that's what you can specify. So you specify, uh, specify kind of your index schema. Next, you can um, do some more on analytics and you can say, okay, I want to apply the, uh, the English dictionary or at least the vocabulary on top of my, my fields. So you can pick uh, many languages. Uh, I chose, uh, you can either choose the Lucene part of the Microsoft. Lucene is a bit faster, but the Microsoft dictionary is more broad. Um, so, so there's a little bit of a trade-off here. And the last one is where you can apply a suggester. Suggester to do the autocomplete in UI. When you specified all that stuff, then you kind of end up at the indexer. And here you can also configure a schedule once you want to do it once, hourly, daily, or some custom um, custom specification around when you want to pull data again to see if there are changes and stuff and then update your collection and index as such. There's some advanced options here as well based on the key. So if your keys are not unique, then you can do the base 64 encoding of them and then that makes them unique. Once you've done that, then basically what will happen is that the index will be built and the collection will be built up as well as it's being shown here. Okay, so far a little bit of a primer, a little bit of overview, a little bit of uh, insights in Azure Search. And now I'd like to do a demo when I, where I'm going to um, show you a few things around the Azure Search. So the first thing I kind of want to show off is where I use a logic app. Calling the logic app um, will get a search parameter. The search parameter will be given to a function. A function will be calling the REST API of Azure Search and the result will be returned. The way I wanted to show you here is let's say you want to do a lookup, you want to query uh, an index. You can do so through a logic app, but then you have to use a function. So if I'll show you the function, the US beer list. So here's the function. So basically that search parameter will be given here in the JSON string. The JSON string will pull that um, search parameter out and will provide that to the get beer list, which will then do the search of the beer index, which I just showed you. So it's been pulled from the document DB a collection being created has been indexed, and then index is being called through this URI, beer search, Windows net, so this is kind of the default DNS, indexes, beer index, docs, search, and then the API version. It will call it and the results will be returned to the function and then will be returned to the logic app, which will return it to the caller. So, let me just switch to Postman. So here you see the URL of the logic app. So if I send 
let's say, okay, give me a list of IPAs. It will provide me a list of IPAs. So by default, this will be 50. And if there's more results, you have to apply paging and such. Now, again, I can also call, let me pick the right one. Here's that search URI again, which you also saw in the function. So I also can directly call the index. So here I just set IPA again, but then apply the filter IBU greater than 60 and then select the name IBU style brewery name and brewery state. So I can make specify a little bit um, more granular uh, the type of search query I want to apply and the results that I want to be have or the results I want to have in my response. So if I switch over to my search, you can see again here the request URL. Again, this kind of mimics what the API will do, but do note that it doesn't have that search uh, keyword here. Uh, this is different. This is through the um, Search Explorer in Azure Search. And as you can see, this is a pretty quick result. So this is kind of similar like, okay, search all the BS with an IBU of greater than 70. I can do this again, let's say greater than 50, and it will give me a result like this. So you can also do the, with the Search Explorer, you can call the search index in the Azure search of your collection of my beer collection in this case. Then I also can do this through .NET. And what I want to show you here is again, I can call the REST API, similar to what I've done in the function, as you can see here, or I import the Microsoft Azure search package for NuGet, and then I do it a little bit differently, more typed. So with the API, it's more loosely um, with the, um, let's say less, less dependency here, it's more strict. If you want to um, use the Azure Search capability in .NET, but done more tight, because then I have to use the Beer class. Or Beer is kind of a the model. It's kind of you know when you get a result back from the search index, then you can um, serialize it to a type of an object, as you can see here. And with that, I can with the Azure Search. I can do stuff like you know, create the, um, the search index client, then I can run a few queries, but then again, you see it's typed. I can do a search, I can do, okay, find me the IPA. Here you see greater than 60 of the IBU. And the IBU for a fact is the, the amount of bitterness or hoppiness. It's a pretty kind of a um, characteristic or trait of a beer. And then here you see some other stuff around, okay, write the results back to the console. So if I start this, there's a breakpoint here, so I'll just continue. So again, this is the result coming from the API, similar to what you've seen in the Azure um, Search Explorer. This is more like, okay, give me all the IPAs, these all list all the IPAs, uh, IBU greater than 60, give me this type of result, and then give me all the beers that are ales, and it gives me this type of result. So I can integrate with Azure Search either using that REST API or using the new Giga package, uh, Microsoft Azure Search, and then apply it and use it in .NET, or you can do this type of thing when you wrap um, your index around an API and then either use that NuGet package or do direct REST calls. The REST API is pretty useful if you want to create an index, update it and such, but if you just more want to just query it, you could also leverage that um, as a search. And finally, just want to show you a little bit of the pricing. So there are different SKUs. There's a free, basic, there are a few standard SKUs. There's a little bit of difference here also in pricing, availability of um, the number of indexes, you see the partitioning here, which is you know, it's, it's required depending on the, the amount of data you have. And you can also see kind of price per unit. So the unit is kind of 
you can apply units if you want to have more throughput and you create more units if you're using the standard um, or maybe uh, and the basic SKU as you can see up to three units 36 and the free unit just gives you limited um, amount of resources but it's very useful if you just want to um, learn a little bit more about Azure search in general so you can use or try this out for free and you can find this Azure Microsoft.com US pricing details for search okay so this was kind of a little bit of a demo around um, Azure search and how you can either leverage the API or that NuGet package so there's different ways you can integrate with search and even if you're not creating search index yourself or do anything around these uh, Azure search service in Azure someone has set that up for you but you somehow have to consume it or work with it then you have a little bit of a background what you know Azure search actually is and then you can see you can call it through a function or through .NET code or you can create a web API that calls search so there's different ways of working with search if you want to learn more about this capability, um, I definitely recommend the Pluralsight course. It's about a little bit over two hours as you're adding search capability uh, to apps. And it's a really useful course. I've followed it too, to learn a little bit more and get a bit of background knowledge around uh, search itself. So it's very useful. Or you can either go to the, the website or to the documentation where you can find more around uh, Azure search. So if you got feedback, please keep them coming. Um, I saw some feedback around previous episodes, also around, around uh, using uh, Liquid in um, applying uh, transformation in Logic Apps. So that was pretty useful too. So thanks for that. And the other thing I'd like to point out before uh, we round up this, uh, this episode is the uh, upcoming Global Integration Bootcamp. So the Global Integration Bootcamp will be Saturday, March 24th. Uh, 2018 so while you're watching this it will be a little bit over 60 days before this uh, full day of integration will happen around the globe so registration is still open for those who want to host the global integration bootcamp themselves uh, set up eventbrite and then you can uh, host the event uh, will apply uh, as an organization which i'm part of from with some labs and stuff you can still set up your own agenda if you want and uh, invite some of your local speakers and you know run this uh, integration bootcamp. We just help you out and provide some of the uh, the guidance and details and uh, marketing around um, your event as well. Okay, so I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank uh, Bist of 360 for being a great host. Um, also, I'm very looking forward to the next episode, which will be episode 50. That will be a milestone episode, which will be done by Kent Weir. So definitely um, looking forward to that one. So that's the 26th of January. So mark that in your agenda. From then on, that milestone episode will be available. So thanks for watching, and I'll leave you with the uh, music credits.